I'm Gabby McEwen from the Grant Estate Agents and today I'm actually in Melbourne and I'm sharing some very sensible tips on how to avoid mortgage stress. Now 1.5 million mortgage holders are spending more than they earn right now in Australia which is very alarming indeed. And Would you believe that even a 1% increase to the RBA cash rate could tip 300,000 Australians into debt. Okay, now that I've shared the scary stats, there's currently 10,000 borrowing households that are considered experiencing severe mortgage stress right now, and mainly in the southern states, but of course, there are people even in Queensland now experiencing mortgage stress. How do you avoid mortgage stress? Well, the best thing to do is obviously to do your homework before you go into a mortgage, but if you've got a mortgage, um, there may be something in here that you can also uh, take on board as well. Well, first of all, make sure you understand how your loan facility is set up. Are you using your offset account? And if you are, are you using it to its best advantage? What happens when you don't make repayments? Now, this is a big one. What about the frequency of repayments? Have you looked into that? Have you looked into that carefully? Do you have an emergency fund? Because if you don't have one, and this surprised me, but my friend at Macquarie reckons you need at least four to five months of repayments as a buffer. Now, I was thinking three months was good, but he's saying not, not enough, four to five months. Now, if you get really sick and you've got income protection, income protection is only 75% of your wage and you get taxed on it, okay? And it often only kicks in after 60 days or so and you've got to literally sing for it. So if you have a serious accident or injury, You've got to keep this all into account. If you can't work, you've only got so many sickies and most people use their sickies anyway, just for the sake of it. And when you're really sick and you need to use them, well, they might all be gone. So don't use your sickies. That's a great moral, um, <laughs> moral little offshoot as well. Make sure you draw up a serious budget as well. If you've got a serious budget and you know what you're up for, then you can actually start to calculate what your spendings are versus your savings, versus what your life will look like when you actually have a mortgage. So you need to look at your lifestyle with a mortgage and your lifestyle without a mortgage and where can you ruthlessly make adjustments and what you're not prepared to live without. If you have to live on baked beans, um, then, you know, if you're okay with that, that's great. But most people really are used to living a certain way and, and, and it could make you quite miserable and unhappy if you've literally really got to slash your lifestyle to the bone. Make sure that you buy something that you can actually add some value to. If you can add 50% of value, that's definitely a really good place to start. And if you've read Michael Yardney's book, he talks about buying something that you can manufacture equity in. So you want to be able to manufacture at least 15% equity. So if you buy something where everything's done, um, hmm, that's great, but then you're really relying on capital growth. And if there's not gonna be much for the next few years, well, then you could really be locked in there. Now also, try and save as much as you can. But having said that, remember that we've had this crazy increase where people did save, and because they saved, they actually missed out and they ended up buying it at a higher price. Whether or not that crazy uh, trajectory is gonna continue remains reasonably unlikely. But if you can save, for a little bit longer or, or share house or something along those lines, I think that could certainly make your life a little bit more comfortable. Remember also we've seen credit card debt again. We haven't seen credit card debt for quite a few years. Suddenly we're seeing it. The restaurants are open. We can now travel overseas. We can travel interstate. Um, the borders are open. It's awesome. It's almost like being normal until you've got to whip out the mask. But yeah, life has changed a lot. Uh, and we're going back to a little bit more normality now and with that comes increased spending and credit card debt. So just be careful and make sure that you are happy to live a frugal lifestyle if you're going to buy that expensive property. So that's all from me. But the best advice I can really give you is talk to somebody you know and trust who's got absolutely nothing to benefit from giving you solid, sound advice and get your budget drawn up. If you would like me to put you in touch with a broker that I trust, I'm always happy to chat to you. Or if you'd like me to put you in touch with someone that can help you with a budget, I'm here to help you. I'm Gabby McEwen. And as always, feel free to reach out to me if I can help you in any way at all with your real estate needs.